Excellent. Thanks for joining today. Uh, today we have Matt Shears with us who works with Karuna Labs, which is a really interesting, uh, they have an interesting program and um, treatment really for chronic pain syndromes. So I'm really excited to hear this one tonight. Um, so Matt, the first thing I always do is kind of have people talk a little bit about um, why they're involved in the work that they're involved in, how you got involved with Karuna and um, what your role is at the company. Um, and then I know you're gonna have your presentation, so I'll let you go ahead and do that. Um, but in the meantime, uh, just start with the introductions and you can launch into your presentation. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Caitlin. Um, so to start, uh, my name is uh, Matt Shears. I am uh, a pain management coach um, for Karuna Labs. And I got into this work um, uh, really for personal, uh, per my own personal journey with chronic pain. So I, I struggled for many years with uh, unexplained um, uh, persistent headaches and neck and shoulder pain um, that ended up leading to um, disability for a period. And um, it came, my, my turning point came through um, receiving pain coaching myself and um, the uh, pain science education that I received and um, skills that I learned through that um, were really a game changer for me. And um, at that time, I was in at sort of a crossroads in my career. My prior work was in the finance realm and I was ready for a change. And um, I decided to um, pursue pain coaching um, as a way to kind of um, pay forward the the benefits that I received. Um, and it's been a great experience. I've been doing it for four years now. And um, soon after I completed my training, um, I started with Karuna. And uh, I started with Karuna, uh, it was about three years ago. And um, it has been great growing with the company. And uh, yeah, I'd love to tell you tell you a bit more about um, the company and the program. Um, so um, the program is multidisciplinary in nature, uh, meaning that it is not just um, a virtual reality headset that um, our patients receive, but it's also individualized coaching. Um, and everything is based on pain neuroscience education. I think that's one of the the reasons why this program is such a good fit for me as a coach, because personally that was a big part of my uh, recovery from, from chronic pain. And um, the program is structured so that um, our patients meet with their coaches um, once a week um, for 12 weeks, and they rent a virtual reality headset from us um, with our application on it. And I'll get into more of the kind of the nuts and bolts of the, of the virtual reality piece. Um, and so, you know, why do we use uh, virtual reality as part of our program for treating chronic pain conditions? Um, the reason is, is that it is a, um, an immersive experience that transports um, a patient's brain and body into a new, safe, pleasant, and engaging environment, um, which is very conducive to doing the uh, rewiring work um, in the in the brain, um, forming new new neural pathways related to moving. Um, so, a big component of the virtual embodiment training is uh, engaging activities to. Um, really reduce the level of fear around movement um, and it's in a, in a fun way. So um, there's a wide library of activities that we have to offer um, with the virtual embodiment training. Um, patients are kind of competing with themselves. And one of the really cool things that um, I love about it is from a coaching standpoint is that all of the activities are set up to be self-guided so that initially, you know, as a coach, I help patients get comfortable with the equipment um, if they haven't used it before and kind of get them set up. But 
for the most part, from there on out, the majority of the time patients spend um, in the headset is, is on their own time. They can do it independently. And that's actually really important because um, we, if we only were able to do it once a week for an hour in session, that would not be, you know, enough reps really um, because, you know, the rewiring process um, is one that requires repetition. Um, and so um, that leaves um, a lot of uh, time in the coaching sessions to focus on the content. So alongside the, um, the equipment, patients receive a workbook, which they get to keep um, both in hard copy form and also in digital format. Um, and there, there's 12 lessons. So each week of the program is structured around a particular lesson that includes specific pain, introduces specific pain science, topics, um, introduces specific skills, and um, allows for in those sessions uh, an emphasis on goal setting. So one of the things we really emphasize in the coaching process is to really understand what it would mean for your life if you got relief from your symptoms. So obviously an outcome we want to see is relief from the symptoms, but we want to connect it to tangible things um, in your life that we can, you know, say that or see progress towards and measure that. So, you know, for, for many people, it may be, um, you know, getting back to, um, you know, walking on the beach, or it may be, um, you know, playing with, with your grandchildren. Um, and so those things are, um, those are really important, um, things to have to kind of point um, our efforts towards. And so the coaching is a really key piece. Um, you know, we feel like the human connection part of this is really helpful. Um, the co other coaches um, uh, that, will, that work for us, us also, similar to me, have personal experiences with chronic pain, which um, I think is very helpful, um, obviously, for being able to empathize with our patients and be, you know, be good, good guides. Um, and so we don't just, you know, send somebody a virtual reality headset and sort of, you know, leave them on their own with it. Uh, we really think that like collaborative, um, uh, relationship is really, uh, works best here. Um, so all of our coaches are, uh, national board certified health and wellness coaches, um, with a specialization in pain management. Um, we have coaches uh, in, in every time zone, um, so we can you know, really fit, fit anyone's schedule who um, comes to the program. Um, you know, it's difficult to do justice to um, the experience of uh, using our application. If you haven't used a virtual reality headset before, it's a very immersive experience. And so, you know, I'll put these graphics up here to give you a, you know, a very um, you know, basic sense of what it's like. It, it really is something that, you know, first you have to experience firsthand um, because what it feel, feels like when you have the headset on is you are seeing your virtual body in, in uh, the form of an, you know, an, we'll call an avatar. And so you can see your virtual hands reaching to grab objects. Um, and there's some really interesting things that we're tapping into with that visual feedback. Um, you know, a neat example is that there are mirroring activities where if you, for example, had an injured right arm, you could move your left arm, but the visual feedback you would be get getting is that your injured arm or your right arm is moving in the virtual environment. And, and the brain doesn't really distinguish between uh, between the two with, with the feedback the brain is getting is that the right arm is actually moving. Um, so it's, you know, things like that, that we are tapping into with this technology. So it's, it's cool technology, but it's, um, there's a really nice, you know, opportunity from a therapeutic standpoint to accelerate the, the process of rewiring the brain that, that would take longer um, without it.
Um, you know, so how effective is our program? We've been, you know, doing this for five years now and collecting data all the way along. You know, we've treated uh, hundreds of patients at this point. And, um, you know, just a few of the metrics that we show here that we're really proud of is, you know, the percentage of patients that show improvements, um, you know, whether it's with activity level, um, self-efficacy, confidence in handling pain, you know, all above, well, above 70% of patients. So really high um, success rate um, across, you know, several different ways of measuring progress. Um, you know, there's been a lot of, um, you know, research and papers written, um, you know, kind of substantiating um, the, the use of virtual reality for tre treating lower back pain. We've, you know, also published our own white paper um, based on our own experience. Um, and, you know, just to kind of show, you know, a brief example of some of the content that um, is in our workbook. Um, you know, we really spend time um, with patients, you know, kind of personalizing this. So it's, it's not just, you know, giving you information and then, um, you know, just hoping it sinks in. It's really trying, you know, with your coach, connecting it to your personal pain experience. Um, and, um, you know, basically the coaching is, is partly there to help kind of facilitate those like light bulb moment or insights into, you know, kind of getting at the, at the root of what's, um, driving the pain sometimes. And, you know, most importantly, what, what to do about it. So, um, giving you skills, um, to, um, do, do the, the rewiring work to get, um, relief from pain. So, you know, we're really looking to tap into the mind body connection. Um, that's, that's really, um, you know, what this program is about. And it's, um, you know, I think for many, in my experience, for many people, it's a really refreshing option. Um, you know, most patients that come to us have exhausted pretty much everything, um, on, under the sun, it seems. Um, and so, you know, this is a different angle to kind of come at, um, the, um, the issue of getting relief from pain. Um, it, you know, it's not like medication or surgery where there's side effects and, and, you know, uh, high risks. Um, it's, um, you know, it's a very gentle form of treatment, but very, you know, it can be very impactful, um, at the same time. Um, and so, you know, mentioned it sort of at the beginning that our program is, um, multidisciplinary in nature. Um, that's a really important piece of the program as well, because um, what we find is that it's usually, it's not usually like there's a silver bullet to help someone. Um, it's usually a combination of things. And so by offering the virtual embodiment training and all of the content and the coaching, there's just a lot of ways to explore finding things that will help and kind of put together your own toolkit, um, so to speak, that that you can walk away from the program with with confidence and in, in being able to um, number one be getting back to a lot of things um, in your life that are important to you, and um, also you know if um, you know pain flares arise in the future, having the confidence to be able to to manage that. Um, you know, a question we get a lot is like you know. Um, you know, after the 12 weeks, like then, then what, um, um, you know, do we need to, you know, invest in a head in our own headset? And what we find is really 12 weeks is sort of sufficient for getting the benefits from the virtual embodiment training and that patients don't need to continue using a virtual reality headset for the ther for the therapeutic benefit beyond that. Um, and what we tend to see is, you know, as, we get closer to the end of the program, patients are just really more focused on their regular life. So the virtual embodiment um, training is there to provide some really positive momentum for getting back to um, the activities that you want, you want to participate in in your life. And so as the program goes on, that's, that's becoming a reality and the virtual reality, the need for it, you know, starts, starts to, to dissipate. Um, so it's not something that um, is intended for you, 
to make our patients sort of dependent on and um yeah so you know we have have a really um great team that's been been working on this for many years um and you know over the last three years i've been with them it's been really great to grow with the company and see how um you know things have have evolved and um just the success that, that we've had um you know i'm leaving my contact information on here if anyone you know wants to reach out with questions to get in more more information uh, please feel free to email me me directly and um, I've also you know provided a copy of this presentation for anyone who wants to be able to, to refer back to it after um and so I think I'm gonna pause there because I want to leave plenty of time for um, the Q a so I'm gonna uh, just stop sharing here and I'll uh, I'll turn it back to you Caitlin for now perfect thank you so much it's it's really interesting this program I know I have like a ton of basic questions first. <laughs> so, um, I mean, the fact that you were also a patient is really helpful because you can explain this in a really clear way, but, um, you talked about pain neuroscience education. Can you just like define what that is, um, and how this program uses it? Yeah, absolutely. So that's a really, um, kind of foundational piece, um, where, you know, sort of the conversation that we want to have is understanding why, what the what the what the purpose of pain is, um, and how it's it's always always ultimately a decision made by the brain. Um, and when we understand that, then we can start to tap into the mind body connection, um, because pain is a decision made by the brain based on its perception of danger. And so what we're looking to do in this program is to really shift from, you know, our brain being in danger mode to safety mode. And so, you know, all of the um, skills and activities in the virtual embodiment training are geared towards calming the central nervous system so that um, there's greater feelings of safety. And when the balance shifts enough towards safety, then the brain no longer needs to generate pain to get our attention because pain is there to um, get our attention. We It's very helpful if we get bitten by a snake, we want to know that that has happened and that's what, what pain does. And so it's, you know, it's our brain's way of protecting us um, with chronic pain. Um, it's kind of like we get, we kind of get stuck in that loop. And so what we're trying to do is to kind of disrupt that um, with all of the different uh, techniques that we use in the program. Awesome. And then, so I did read the white paper before we <laughs> joined this call. So I, they talk about kinematics, which is spelled K-I-N-E-M-A-T-I-C-S. So can you, A, explain what that is <laughs> and how is that used in this program? Yeah, so I, I just wanted to, because I am not an expert on that particular topic. I, I, I know it's relation to virtual reality in that it's what allows for the immersive experience. Um, so being able to sort of simulate, um, you know, the, the physical aspects of, of virtual reality. Um, so I would kind of just sort of summarize it that way without, you know, getting, getting too far into the weeds on it. Um, cause I, I, I don't have the knowledge to get too far into the weeds myself. That's totally fine. Um, and then in your presentation, it talks about somatic tracking and um, altered visual feedback. So I know you talked about it a little bit. What's the neuroscience behind all that? And I, I know you also talked about how when you have your left arm moving, um, but your brain is shown that your right arm is moving, if that's the injured or painful arm. So um, can you summarize how that works and really how your brain gets retrained in that kind of situation. Yeah. Um, so what we're kind of tapping into with the virtual reality is the fact that our brains don't distinguish between, you know, virtual reality or our imagination and actual reality. 
So to the extent that we can provide visual feedback in the virtual environment that our bodies are moving in a particular way, that is a piece of feedback that gets sent to the brain. And if it's you know related to a particular movement, say, you know, picking up an object, um, what patients tend to find is like, for example, we incorporate some activities of daily living into um, the virtual embodiment training where, you know, in their everyday lives, frequently patients will start and say like, you know, I can't even like unload a dish out of the dishwasher without, you know, being in a ton of pain. And then they start to notice that when they do it in the virtual environment, it doesn't hurt. Um, and so it's that new, and that's new feedback to the brain that we are then looking to see translate into their actual lives. So it's sort of like this, oh, that's interesting. And then it provides that momentum to then try it in their, you know, in, in reality, and then start to get the feedback that, hey, actually, when I do it in reality, um, you know, it's, it's a much different experience than it was before. And that's sort of how, like, you know, at a basic level, the rewiring happens. And you, you talk about it's not just VR, it's there's also certain therapies um, implemented. You talk about acceptance and commitment therapy, which I think is called ACT therapy. I've heard of it before. <laughs> but what makes it different than the other types of therapy? Why do you choose that one? Um, and yeah. is that something that's done weekly with your coach? Yeah, so um, I'm glad you brought that up. So, you know, as coaches, we stay in our lane. We're not therapists, so it's not therapy sessions. The curriculum, though, does incorporate um, concepts from different um, disciplines, including acceptance and commitment therapy. We, we, you know, I think that one is a useful one in that it's um, very uh, values-based. So, you know, I talked about the goal setting. We like to really understand what our patients value and help them take committed actions towards those values. That's kind of what ACT, ACT is about. Um, but the program has a lot more to that as well as some, you know, cognitive, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, um, kind of like what we view as like the best pieces of a lot of different, um, disciplines we have kind of weaved together, together in this program because we want our patients to have lots of options for benefiting from the program. Sure. Um, so what does the this the pain coach do? <laughs> How does that work? Yeah, so um, all of our pain coaches are um, trained in uh, motivational interviewing, which is a particular communication style for coaching. So um, the the coach's job is to really help personalize and um, curate the program for the patient. Um, so. In addition to meeting with the coach once a week over video uh, um, for approximately 50 minutes, um, the coach is um, collaborating with the patient to curate what activities are part of their routine each week on the headset. Um, uh, the coach is there, you know, for accountability um, each week. You know, in terms of talking about goals, the coach is there. To help with the education component, um, you know, kind of personalizing the information from the workbook um, to the patient's actual experience. Um, the, the coach is there as, as a guide, having had personal experience um, with chronic pain and overcoming it. Um, so there's a lot of ways that the coaching um, plays, you know, a big role in a patient's success with the program. And to be honest with you, many of our patients val have valued um, the coaching, sometimes even more than the virtual embodiment training itself. Um, that it's, um, it's a really key piece of, of what we do. We kind of view what we do as a coaching program that's enhanced by the virtual embodiment training. Yeah. Um, a really good question. I, I know it came in ahead of time, but it was asked in the chat as well. Um, patients with vestibular dysfunctions, uh, they have issues with like motion sickness, vertigo, stuff like that. 
Um, so that's a big issue with video games and stuff. So uh, regarding the headset, uh, is this a problem do you, that you see frequently or are there accommodations that can be made? Yeah, so it, it depends. So it can be. If it's very severe motion sickness and vertigo, um, we want our patients to be able to engage in this safely. Um, and so we have had patients that have those symptoms be able to engage in it. Um, but if it's so severe that, you know, it's, it's sort of a non-starter that can happen, it's really the only exclusionary criteria that we have for participating in the program. Um, so it's kind of case by case assessing that. Is that something that you assess prior to getting started with the uh, system? Yeah, so we would definitely want to like inquire into the, the sort of the nature of it, get an understanding of the severity of it, um, be transparent with the patient about you know the potential that the could the experience could trigger that, mm -hmm. um, and kind of make a decision with the patient whether it's appropriate for them or not. Um, question, can, is this something that can be used in coordination with ongoing other therapies? So physical therapy, um, is this something that it can be, uh, used in physical therapy? They can talk to their PTs about it or other therapies. Yeah. So we, we really like to work collaboratively with other practitioners. So it is, we view it as a complementary program, um, to things like physical therapy or psychotherapy. Um, and we we really feel like it's important for patients to feel like they have a team behind them. So we like kind of working in in teams uh, in sort of that team format. Perfect. Um, this is a question that uh, kind of didn't come up before, and I'm I'm curious if there's anything specific on it. Are there any data on emotional outcomes um, at the end of the program? Uh, a lot of patients definitely struggle deeply with depression, anger, um, you know, just general anxieties, stuff like that. Um, what's been done as far as researching those outcomes as well? Yeah, so um, we definitely are focused on the emotional side of the equation um, when it comes to someone's chronic pain experience. Some ways that we have been measuring progress along that is um, some measures like fear avoidance beliefs. Um, we've seen, you know, more than 70% of our patients report, you know, significant reduction on that. In addition to that, there's also a way to measure pain catastrophizing um, as well. And we've, you know, so similar to the fear avoidance behavior, seen, you know, a really large percentage of patients, um, you know, see that come down a lot. So that's how, how we are measuring it. We continue to look for new new ways to measure where we've started to um, measure uh, or to track mood scores as well um, to kind of, you know, continue to have more um, output in terms of, you know, emotional impact. Um, and so, you know, in the future, we will have more to kind of report on that. Mm -hmm. And then I guess we should quickly run through this as far as the steps are concerned, but how does the program actually work? Um, the, the patient comes to you and then what happens after they uh, enroll? Yeah. So, um, you know, the pay, the program is entirely home-based. So you, you, do it all from the comfort of your home. Um, I am sort of the uh, person that most frequently coaches patients that come directly to our program, as opposed to, we also have patients that come through the VA and workers' compensation programs. Um, and so I'm usually the first point of contact to help you know, educate the patient and um, see if the program's appropriate. And then frequently I will also be their coach. And so the way it starts from there is to um, first gather, you know, just some information to be able to ship the headset out to the patient, you know, provide an, an invoice um, for the cost of the program. And that first set up our first meeting, which is that sort of video setup session where um, we work on, on getting you comfortable 
using the equipment and and set up with it and then there thereafter we start with the the 12 coaching sessions um I, i'm gonna run it back for a two-part question sure. <laughs> how does a patient know that they're eligible for this kind of treatment um what other treatments need to have failed first and then as an addendum is this in adults only or are there pediatric patients that you guys see as well yeah um so maybe i'll start with the second part this um to date to my knowledge we have only worked with adults um however that would not uh it's I don't believe there's any restrictions on us working with pediatric patients. Um, you know, if, if that were the case, um, the, um, first part of the question, um, just eligibility, eligibility. Yes. Um, so it ranges. So patients can don't need necessarily need like a referral to be able to do our program. Um, if they're, you know, paying, uh, coming to us directly, um, that's, that's a path that, you know, a good percentage of patients take, um, some do come to us, you know, because their providers have heard, heard about our program. Um, and it ranges in terms of how many things have been exhausted in general. Um, many patients come to us after they feel like they've tried everything under the sun. That's like probably the norm. Um, but it's in some ways, you know, that's not ideal, right? Like, and that's not a requirement for us. Like you have to have done, you know, tried all these things. Like um, maybe it would be better to be starting sooner with something like this. And so we also see patients that recognize that and say, I want to kind of like, avoid this becoming so entrenched that it's hard to treat and are sort of, you know, earlier, um, you know, in the very early stages of the pain becoming chronic. Mm -hmm. No, good point. I know. Um, so a lot of the diseases that we, um, work with, they're, they're generally surgical and a lot of surgeons are kind of desperate to not go into the OR if they can avoid it. So this is something interesting um, that I hope is studied a little bit more frequently before someone has a surgery that may or may not help them depending. Yeah, I think it's a good good point. And, you know, I think sort of to turn it on its head, like our hope is like maybe our program should be, you know, rule, you know, ruled out before going to surgery as opposed to the, you know, the reverse. Mm -hmm. Um. There was a question about how long the program is, and I know you said 12 weeks, but could severity of symptoms impact someone's ability to move through the program on a regular timeline? So is there ever a case where maybe someone's just really, really severely impacted and that timeline kind of gets pushed by, and I don't know what that would look like. How do, has that ever happened? Yes. Um, you know, we, we work with our patients. We recognize that it's um, difficult for many patients to kind of move, you know, swiftly through the program week by week. Um, for some patients that may look like extending the program, I have a patient right now that's opted to extend it to 20 weeks. Um, she felt like there was just, she wanted to take her time with it and felt like there was a lot more she could continue gaining from it from particularly from a coaching standpoint. Um, so it's flexible in that way and it doesn't have to be 12 consecutive weeks. Um, it, it helps if there's some continuity. Um, that being said, I have seen patients who have like, you know, paused it for a few weeks and then come back. And sometimes the pause helps um, to kind of like, you know, let some things like really um, that, you know, have sort of been like simmering, like kind of come into play and then come back. Um, so it's it's not rigid in that way. Great. Um, so some our disease specific questions for sure are important to touch upon. So there's a question from a patient um, with their with their Chiari pain, they're considering it more like central pain, like it's it's not necessarily in any specific location. So um, 
maybe the VR specifically, it's not going to help with like a, an arm situation. It's just kind of all over the head hurts, just throbbing. So it has this program been used in those types of pain syndromes? And if so, how? Absolutely. Yeah. So this, this is not a program that can only help people who have, you know, pain in a specific region of their body. Um, you know, we have had a good percentage of patients fit that description that you just described. And the reason why the program um, can help someone in that um, with that condition is that when you think about what we're doing at a very high level, objective wise, is to calm the central nervous system. It's not just about, you know, restoring movement to, you know, a particular arm or, um, you know, your lower back. Um, and so the coaching plus all of the library of activities and the virtual embodiment training, which, you know, I probably should have um, talked about a little bit more, the variety of them, there's, there's the movement part, but then there are, you know, um, activities that, you know, are more, have a more of a meditation feel to them, kind of calming. There are activities in there that are more geared towards um, facilitating insights about the pain experience. Um, so there's, you know, again, there's a lot of ways to um, apply this program in terms of pain conditions. We've really worked with a wide range of um, pain conditions um, and been able to, to help a lot of people with, you know, a variety of symptoms. That was actually a really good segue because another question was about personalization. So you talked about those activities of daily living, and I know you mentioned the dishwasher, loading the dishwasher. But I mean, some patients with these disorders are able to have office jobs and they can sit for long periods at a desk, but it still causes some issues. But others have hands-on jobs and they're not able to stand anymore. Um, so that's something that they have to work on. So what are those like that library of activities that the program kind of works with as far as, and, and is it personalized to the patient themselves? Absolutely. Um, you know, another thing I should mention just in terms of um, sitting and standing, the, the application can be used both seated and standing. Um, so many patients, you know, um, have, a, have a strong preference to start with that. And, you know, we're really, with particularly with the coaching, is we really want to meet the patient where their starting point is. Not everyone is starting at the same, you know, at this in the same circumstances. Um, and so, you know, that's where the personalization comes in um, in terms of, you know, what activities, uh, you know, are assigned on the headset um, and then the focus of, of the coaching sessions as well. So it's not like, you know, there's it's helpful to have structure for the program, but there's a lot of um, room for personalizing it um, within the coaching session. So it's not this, this sort of like rigid, you know, check this box, check this box for everybody. Um, it feels like a very personal experience. Great. That was actually my follow-up question about whether or not it was can be done standing or seated. <laughs> so <that's good. laughs> um, there's a group of patients that we work with who have EDS and other connective tissue disorders. And I know the VR system, the way it works is it kind of guesses how long your arms and legs are. Um, and I know people with uh, conditions like Marfan's have really long, lanky arms and legs. So is that something that the VR system is able to account for? Um, if someone's just like extra long <laughs> or or shorter? Yeah, so um, you know the headset does calibrate to to um, you know the size and proportions of of a person, um, and you know I I have a, a patient that fits that description, and um, you know it it was not at all an issue for her. Perfect. Um... There are a handful of other questions, and if anyone has any more, you can definitely use the chat. I'm just going to get to a few more that came in ahead. So the a question about 
is it important to change the current medications or therapy options that someone's already using? I, I know a lot of people there, it's, it's hard to come off a medication or to switch to something else. Everything can get wacky. So is that something that's required for the, pro the program? Not at all. Um, we definitely encourage patients to continue to work with their prescriber on their pain medicine. You know, obviously uh, an objective for the program and it depends on the on the patient, maybe to reduce, you know, the usage of medication, but it's not something you have to get off of it immediately to, to use ours. And we would actually recommend not doing that because um, that can create, you know, uh, withdrawal, withdrawal symptoms and really um, create a lot of um, challenges for someone to even engage in the program. So, um, you know, generally we like to know what medications our patients are taking just to know that, but there's no judgment about that or pressure to make changes. And, um, you know, certainly in terms of any guidance was to be given, particularly at the start would be, you know, just keep, keep it constant. Don't, don't make any big changes right now. Um, I guess as a follow-up, I know whenever you're starting a new exercise routine, they say you should check with your physician. So is that something that you guys also recommend for this program that you do that first? Yeah, I, th I think that's always um, good practice. You know, it, it is, this is very gentle. Um, but that being said, I, you know, always would say like, you know, talk to your physician and talk it through with them and uh, get their perspective on it. And then these are more logistical questions, I think, but uh, how does the, how long does the program take uh, throughout the week? So how many hours of their week need to be set aside to do either the coaching sessions or the uh, movement training as well? Yep. Um, so in total, would we kind of uh, the guidance we provide our patients is if you can give us three hours per week total across everything, um, we can make a lot of progress. And so what that looks like in terms of breakdown is, you know, cumulatively about an hour and a half of virtual embodiment training. And, you know, one thing to mention with that is it's not something that has to be done in long sessions. It can be broken up into five to 10 minute sessions, you know, throughout the day and throughout the week. Uh, we really encourage patients to not actually like push through um, when they're doing it to because we want we want this to feel safe um, um, for the the system. And um, so an hour and a half, half of it, half of that time is the virtual embodiment training, you know, approximately an hour for the individual coaching session, and then like a half an hour of like kind of preparation for the coaching session is ideal. So, reading through the lesson before um, the coaching session. There's some um, short video content that kind of supplements that, that's helpful to watch. Um, and, you know, there may be some, you know, goals and skills that come out of a session that, you know, require some some time, but, um, you know, it's not, not a, you know, it's not nothing, but it's also not, um, you know, something that's going to, take up the majority of your time during the week. Um, and then about how long until most of the people who are engaged in this usually end up seeing some kind of results with this kind of program? Is it they see them before those 12 month uh, weeks or is it after uh, with repeated practice? Yeah, we, we tend to see patients seeing the benefits and the, the shifts within the program. So usually around week six or halfway through the program, um, there are noticeable differences um, for a good percentage of patients. Um, and, um, you know, every patient is different. You know, that would be sort of like the median patient. Um, you know, some patients, some things may sort of click later in the program. Also seeing patients where things click right away. Um, and, but the, this is not something where it's like a, it's meant to have like a really delayed effect where, you know, you go through it for 12 weeks and then, you know, you need to give it a month after that to see anything. It's, you, you, it's intended to see the results within the program. 
Um, this is a good question. Do you recommend any changes in diet or exercise? Um, is that part of the coaching? Yeah. So, um, you know, we do look at things holistically um, and we talk about nutrition and exercise, but it's, it's not something where we're, we're giving like strict guidelines for, it's just more exploring with the patients, particularly when it's an area of interest for them in terms of focusing on their wellness and we can help support them with that, um, you know, either with, you know, accountability or goal setting or, you know, sometimes informationally. Um, and so it, it is a piece of it, but um, it's, it's really in many ways like patient driven. And then I'm going to ask the million dollar question, almost literally <laughs> what yeah. something like this costs and how does payment work? Is it entirely self-pay? Can insurance help pay for treatments like this? Um, I know you mentioned something about workers comp. I don't know if we can get into yes. that. Too. Yep. Yep. Ha happy to speak to all that. Um, so if, if you have workers compensation insurance or VA benefits, um, the good news is we can, most of the time get the program reimbursed in full. Um, so those those payers do um, pay, for, pay for the program. Um, at this time, private insurance and Medicare are not there yet. Um, so th those are not unfortunately um, available for reimbursement for the program yet. Um, and so it, it in, in the case where you don't have workers' compensation or VA benefits, it would be out of pocket. Um, you can use health savings accounts to pay for the program. And the way the cost breaks down is for um, for everything, the 12 weeks with um, the individual coaching, the headset rental, all the content, everything, it's um, $3,600. Um, we do offer the option to start with a six-week commitment um, for half that cost or 1800 and you know, it sort of syncs up with what I was saying in terms of like when patients are starting to really see a difference. Um, and so we recognize it's, it's, it's an investment um, in your health. We, you know, our intention is to hopefully make it one of the best investments you, you can make and definitely get, get your more than your money's worth. Um, but we offer that payment option, um, you know, for patients that would like to, you um, you know, kind of uh, e ease into it um, before committing to the full thing. And then I don't see any other questions. So I am going to just instead um, ask you to just reiterate how people can get in touch with you or even learn more about the program. I know some people joined a little later. Um, how can people get in touch and learn more? Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, if you want to get in touch with me directly with questions, um, my email address is matt at coronalabs.com. Um, it's, it's also at the end of the presentation. Um, our website has a lot of great information. So it's coronahrp.com. Those are probably, you know, the, the two best ways to, um, to follow up if you want to get, learn more. That's perfect. Well, thank you so much, Matt, for this. This was really, really interesting. Um, I know the neuroscience of like neuroplasticity is just, it's a new kind of field when you really think about it, even though it feels like we've been talking about it forever. So this is really, it, it's good. And I think it's something that um, a lot more chronic pain treatments need to be considering at least for, especially for things that um, it, it continues. It's really, really chronic. So uh, I think this is interesting. <laughs> I'd like yeah. to share more. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. And yeah, really, really appreciate the opportunity to present here and really appreciate all the, the great questions. Awesome. Thanks everyone for joining and I will be in touch for sure. I'll, I'll also share the slides that uh, Matt also shared, which will have his email as well. <laughs>